This, this is PTR Radio with Colin. But indicted means he was actually, you know, went in front of the jury and they said, "Yes, you're guilty." You're addicted. Yeah, yeah. indicted would mean that you just wait. wait. Um, I've see. never heard the word indicted before. Well, it says right here, indicted. Every single one of these, indicted. That's that's how you pronounce it. Indicted. Indicted. The C is silent. Oh. <laughs> And now, live, live on, on the, the fabulous, fabulous interweb, PTR Radio. this is PTR Radio. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of PTR Radio here on the fabulous interweb. Uh, it is a Tuesday instead of Monday. We're going on one day late this evening, or uh, this week. Hope you don't mind, but that's because vacation is coming up, and so last-minute items are on the docket. So uh, thanks to both of you guys for rearranging your schedule so that we could do this on a Tuesday. I was still recovering from my trip anyway, so it was fine. (laughs) Oh, so we will get to that, but yeah, Colin, as you mentioned, uh, you had a trip going on, which is why you weren't here on the last show, I think. Or no, you were here on the last show, but then you left relatively quickly afterwards because you went to disney for five days something like it was that? a week a week okay. saturday to saturday saturday to saturday so you come back yep. and we're in the you know low double digits of temperature yes i, I left it was warm i was at Dis- disney where it was uh high 80s and very humid mm-hmm. but acceptable just just acceptable mm-hmm. and then i get back to oh look there's snow that we had approximately three weeks of fall this year, if you can even call it that. Yeah. Because even in those weeks, it still hit like 80. So it was pretty ridiculous here. Uh, now, as I understand it, Mike, the East Coast isn't having too much of a better time. Uh, no. no, it's dropping down into the 30s at night now. Well, according to the weatherman here, we're going to hit 18 tonight. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous and i decided to take a vacation and i'm driving into the snow he was crazy that's what everybody i tell them going on vacation to the east coast is they're like that's a summer trip man that is not a winter trip at all uh but that's what i'm going to do and we'll get to that here in a little bit but first, uh, just to let you know, this is PTR Radio. If you want to find out more about the show, including our 15-plus years of broadcasting, please check out PTRRadio.com. Our phone line is working tonight, so if you want, you can call or text 217-787-0232. That's 217-787-0232. Our, our brand-new phone. Our brand-new phone, Mike. We got a new phone, a physical phone. We're back to landlines. Not really, but, you know. I I got look and I got a long cord. You know. Yeah, I'm working on that. We, we got we got the old cord that you could go like 15 feet away from the wall. And you need that why? I don't know. For, it, for long long distance callers to the show. Long distance dedications, Mike. We're Casey Kasem. The first they okay. call and then we have to pick the handset up and then run over to wherever they are and get the hand them the handset. <laughs> I mean, you know, we may have we may have need of that sometime. I'm I, like you. I I'm not sure when, but I'm sure sometime. Uh, and there you go. Now that is turned on for you. Sorry, it's been a while. I, I but you will be happy about this, Mike. The rig left the studio Saturday. It came back yesterday, and everything's working. Nice. So. Very nice. For once, I disconnected stuff, and I reconnected it in the right order. Well done, sir. Every once in a while, we get lucky. Uh, At least until someone tells us there's something wrong. Yes, and and until somebody says, I can't hear anybody, you're all just, you know, mutes. So, uh, you know, if that's happening, uh, please uh, uh, chat in. (laughs) But, But so far... I, I hope everybody is hearing us, because at least I, it looks like they should be. Yeah, I just checked. and Okay, good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, so, 
Yeah, this evening we have quite a few things planned, um, most of them ad hoc, because I, I did a horrible job of curating links for tonight. Well, um, we all did. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's because we were so taken in by the two movies that we're going to be reviewing towards the end of the show. I mean, they just consumed all of our time. Let me just say, not only was I so consumed by these movies, I put myself through the hell of watching the Meg. I, You know what? You're the second person today that said that to me, and I haven't watched it yet, and I have it. No. <laughs> you know? I haven't watched it yet don't, either. Don't don't do it. <laughs> Just don't. I a few weeks ago I started watching movies that I had gotten that I, you know going out to Walmart and purchased, of course, um, and uh, and you know because they were like, okay, I want this movie because I want to watch it, but they were ones that I had just accumulated for like almost a year and I hadn't watched. Mm-hmm. And what I realized was, come Sunday on those weeks. Hey, I haven't watched the movies I'm supposed to watch yet. <laughs> you know, I've watched all these other movies. So, you know, I have I, I and unfortunately some of those movies are on our list. So, but they weren't chosen for that week. It's like I think I put Axel on our list. It was a new release by Netflix. I I, I asked for Axel to be put on the list. Okay. Yeah, cuz I saw it in the theater. I, I said we have to watch this movie for the show. I saw it on Netflix. <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize it was out yet. Yeah. It's about a robot dog. Yeah, I remember seeing the trailer for it, and I was like, huh? It's like an upgraded version of the 1980s movie Chomps. But, you know, nobody remembers that movie. Okay, well, Mike, you need to watch the movie so we can discuss it. <laughs> okay. Um, You will be sad at one point in the movie, though, Mike. But two points in the movie. Of course. You know? Because it's a dog. Of course, I'm watching, not to spoil it, I'm watching the Meg, and there was a scene with a dog, and I'm like, oh, hell no, they didn't. Mm. Is it is it like the dog in uh, It's Over Man? Or Game Over Man? Where he goes into the fish tank? No, no. It's well, not, sort not of. That bad. Okay. So, so, yeah, I started watching all those. Um <clears throat> You know, and also thinking about everything that I have to pack for my trip. You know, so it's just been it, it's been one of those times because I'm going on a trip, and part of it I'm going to be working during the trip. So, well, we'll we'll get. I'll tell you what. We'll just get into that now. So, my trip is going to be a couple weeks long. Okay, a little bit less than two weeks. So we will be skipping next show. Yeah. Well. Yeah, we won't. We definitely won't have a two-hour show. Mike and I may pop on for a little bit. Yeah. You know, in person. Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. De- it, depending it, upon how as it's much, going. As much as Mike and Shaggy can do using a cell phone, um, holding, you know, holding it <laughs> and going, hi, everyone. So, um, you know. And, and without pissing off our wives. Yeah. Doing it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, but uh, but I think it'll still be fun. So I'm I'm going to visit my sister-in-law for a week. And that is a technology desert right now, okay? <laughs> they have internet, and they have wireless, um, but they don't have Roku or Fire Stick or any of that. So I, I'm like Moses coming down from the mountaintop delivering, you know, m- multimedia. I, I was going to say, those are easy things to transport. Yeah. Well, I'm and I'm taking extras from my house because, you know, I upgraded several units, so I have a few extras now. So, I mean, granted, they're getting leftovers, but still, you know, but if the service there isn't up to par for wireless, let's say, I'm sure the Internet's fine. But, you know, if like the router can't get to everywhere in the house or something like that, well, I'm going to have to fix it while I'm there. Um, so, you know, I've already started to look for the closest Best Buy's. Uh, you know, and things like that, so that I can maneuver around. And well, you're there for a week. That's plenty yeah. of time for Amazon to deliver. Uh, could be, yeah. You know, but uh, <clears throat> so yeah. So I'm gonna go there, and then um, we're gonna spend Thanksgiving and my sister-in-law's birthday with her, and then I'm heading to see Mike for a night. Well, I'm going to New York first, because you know, 
Rockefeller <coughs> Center during the winter time. You can't miss so, that. Yeah. So this was my question. Yeah. Because I said this to Kim. So you're going to drive from Maryland. Uh huh. What time are you leaving? Uh, uh, early, probably you know six or so. I don't know. Okay. Then you're going to go to New York to see, to Rockefeller Center. Well, the idea is that we wouldn't actually drive there. Like I asked you for suggestions on how what was the best way method to get there. So yeah. Right. Yeah. But. So after driving from Maryland, you're going to go to Rockefeller Center. Uh-huh. And then you're going to come back, check into the hotel. We're going to meet for dinner. Yeah. And then what? You're Then you're leaving? Uh, New the, Jersey? The next morning. No, we're staying the night. And then okay. probably the next morning, I don't know, mid-morning or so, she wants to get up into Vermont. So, And that's not a short drive. No, that is not a short drive. Yeah. And when asked, why do you want to go to Vermont? Well, I want some cheese. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a second. Now, uh, I gotta, you have to understand, nah. we live in Illinois, which is just south of Wisconsin, which is known for cheese. You know, if she had said maple syrup, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> well, we can get maple syrup here. <laughs> yeah, lots of good maple syrup here in Illinois. Oh, yeah, man. so it's about six hours from where you are to Vermont. Okay, Vermont, yeah, okay. For some reason, I was thinking different, but yeah, six six hours is not... It's not bad. That's an afternoon. Terrible. I mean, we do, we do ten when we go to her dad's, so... But that's also assuming you're not going to hit any traffic and what have you. Yeah, I would I would tack an hour onto that. I usually tack honest. for every six or so hours. I usually tack on at least an hour for gas stops, gas and stops, and traffic. You know, because you're gonna have to stop okay. and pee at least once. You know. Okay. So, because Kim was like, "Are they gonna get back in time from New York to go to dinner? I mean, is, is that feasible?" I'm like, "Well." <laughs> <laughs> I was having that exact same question when my wife said, well, why don't we go to New York first and then we'll come back and we'll go to dinner. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. But I, I really think she just wants to go see Rockefeller Center then turn around and come back. Well, at that point, honestly, you might as well just go on Tuesday because you're going to practically drive through or drive past to... Yeah, I just... I'll tell you what, I have this... The last time I was in New York, granted, that was like 16, 17 years ago, but I can't imagine the drivers have gotten any better. Well, right. no. I mean, I, and I'm not talking about you driving into yeah. Manhattan. <laughs> okay, good. All because right. the last time I was on a Gray Line tour bus, and I got sideswiped, and both of them kept going. All right. So, uh, like I said, I can't imagine there are any better drivers today than what they were then. Um, well. All right, so I mean, we now that we know where you're staying, yeah, we kind of got an idea of some. I'm going to shoot you some suggestions for, but I'm for meals. Yeah, so. I'm I'm definitely open to better ways to manage our time. Uh, so you know, because better ways to manage your from, time that does not make uh, your wife angry. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm 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 shooting from the hip on a lot of this, uh, you know. But I also didn't want to. That's a, that's a work day. I also didn't want to put anybody out. You know, or any of that kind of stuff. So, you know, I was trying to be conscious of all that kind of stuff. So, you well, know. I'm just, I'm just looking to see when is the tree lighting. That's not until Wednesday. So we are going to miss that. So really, you're not even going to see the tree lit up or anything. You no. Just, she just wants to see it decorated. You won't even see that. Well, by, by Monday, shouldn't it be decorated? It just won't be turned on. 50 50 shot okay they may still have all the scaffolding up around it mm. okay they may bring that down on tuesday okay for the for the uh the ceremony or they may actually not even bring it down till wednesday the day of the ceremony to make sure everything is in place okay just yeah so i have to do a little bit more research throw, just kind of throwing that out there i mean i'm not trying yeah. to rain on anybody's parade i if it was up to me, uh, we wouldn't go to New York. <laughs> but it's well, not up to me. 
Well, I mean, I don't mind seeing like you know, like I said, it's been a long time, so I don't mind seeing you know Times Square. I don't mind seeing you know uh, uh, the park, uh, Central Park. I don't mind seeing that kind of stuff again, you know, because there's still lots of photo opportunities even in the winter time with those places, and so I don't mind seeing that. And the last right. time we were there, we weren't a couple. Okay, so you know that makes a big difference too now. So yeah. You know, but she's not interested in that kind of stuff. She wants to see Central Park, or she wants she wants to see Rockefeller Center decorated. Now, I'm sure there'll be other decorations and things like that. She just thought that the tree would be done because the parade is Thanksgiving. So she thought that that you know would mean that the Christmas stuff would be up. It would be up. It'll probably be covered with scaffold. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm playing a lot of stuff by ear. So, but yes, if it's uh, going to be covered by scaffold, I I probably want to tell her so that she can manage expectations. Yeah, I don't want to get yeah. her there and then she's pissed. The other thing too, like if you're going to be there, you know, maybe you go. Well, not going to be near Rockefeller Center. I was going to say you could go to the 9/11 Memorial. Yeah. Is that that something that you haven't seen yet? Well, no, because the last time we were there, the Twin Towers were there, and our right. train pulled into the basement of one of them, pretty much. Yeah. So. But that see, that's the thing. That's a whole other train thing. Yeah. So, I mean, still got a week. Yeah, yeah. So, but here, here's how bad my lack of planning has been, because normally I have this all planned out, but, but normally our trips are quite a bit different, too. Like, last time we went on a big trip, we went and visited my sister-in-law when she was living in North Carolina, and then we're like, okay, we're going to go there for a week, and then we're going to go to Tennessee for a week, and we're just going to base out of this Airbnb and then visit everything around the area, you know, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, etc., for five days, and then we're going to come home. This is really the first trip that we're doing together where it's like, all right, we're going someplace for a week, but then it's like hop, 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 hop. And I have to try and figure out, okay, how far can we go in a day? Where where do I think we're going to be? Where do I think is a good place to base out of? Because there's there's no place, you know, funny enough, go, you can't Google where are the best general shopping and cheese shopping places in Vermont. They don't have that type of overlay map. <laughs> <laughs> That's re- Mama Blair <laughs> yeah. referring to when they went to New York this summer. Yeah, and we did the last time we went to New York, it was in the summertime, and it was a during a heat wave, and we had babies with us. Oh, so um, you know, yeah, they're, and they're we were to, camping. Their trip to New York was so bad that they uh, wondered if they ever wanted to go on vacation again when they got back from it. Yeah, so you know. I'm lucky. I, you know, my daughter is going to be staying at the house and taking care of everything, and we've got other friends that are going to be cycling in and out of the house to take care of things. So, it's not a big deal that we're going to be gone. But so I, <clears throat> yeah, I give you one tip. Okay, for food on the road. Uh huh. Packer Barrel. Uh, you know, we we do tend to hit a lot of chains, but I also try to avoid chains. It's really weird. We hit chains. When we're just stopping for a night or something, mm-hmm. because I think, all right, when we're rolling in late and we don't know where to eat, I'll pick a chain because it's consistent. It's good. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I always know what I can order that I'm not going to have any problems with. So I'm not saying Cracker Barrel in general. I'm mm-hmm. saying Cracker Barrel for a special reason. Okay. They have a, uh, a seasonal dish right now. Okay. You know, chicken fried steak. Yes, they have chicken fried turkey right now. They have chicken fried turkey. It I, is amazing. I saw that on the menu. Chicken fried turkey should just be a permanent part. They should just be. They should just change their name from Cracker Barrel to the place that has chicken fried turkey. <laughs> so, it's very good. So I, it's, it's like, wife, are you hearing this? <laughs> chicken fried turkey. <laughs> so, uh, you know. It's like it's like the first night that we're going like we're not going from Illinois to Maryland in one night. We in one day. We were going to okay. do it, but it's like it's a four it, it's by the time you factor in gas, d- meals and, you know, restroom breaks, <clears throat> it ends up being like a 13-14 hour trip. Uh-huh. 
and that's a bit much. So we're gonna break it into two two nights or into into two trips. So I'm so I got a hotel like the far side of Ohio, and I know already three blocks from the hotel there's a Texas Roadhouse. Okay, <laughs> we can eat there right. and not have to worry about it. Now my only general problem with Texas Roadhouses are they're loud and salty. I don't care about that. I do. But uh, I like my food tasty, not salt lucky. Well, I usually have a steak anyway. They don't over season their steaks. Uh, they do if it's country fried steak. Well, yeah. <laughs> but you don't want a country fried steak. You want country fried turkey. Yeah. So uh, I know. I, I just went to Cracker Barrel's website and took a screenshot of it. <laughs> that and I I sent it to Kim in a message like <laughs> because. Uh, th- the picture they have, it has the string beans and it has mac and cheese. Yeah. That's and, it, that's, now, granted, that, this, is is, probably, this is probably the worst time to send this to her because she hasn't been feeling good today. No. She's been eating basically chicken soup and chicken and rice. So I just got the comment back. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's it disgusting isn't just now. Green beans, it's green bean casserole. Which I guess they've never had before. Okay. You've never had they, green bean casserole? They've never had green oh, bean okay. casserole before. I was going to say, you live in the Midwest and you've never had green bean casserole? How? How is that possible? No, it's not possible. <laughs> I mean, we are we invented the casserole. So, um, I mean, if it has cream of mushroom soup in it, we created it. I mean, that's the way the Midwest works. <laughs> so, um... So I just got back from vacation, and there's uh-huh. a couple of things I wanted to talk about there. One is, yeah, I keep getting comments from people at work wondering why I keep going on vacation to Disney. Well, you answered this on, on, on I think, maybe like two or three trips ago where you said that's your default location. It's my default location, but I explained that it's cheap, and they cannot understand this concept of going to Disney is cheap. So I just wanted to real well, quick go through That's the because you have a Ponzi scheme. To get free Disney bucks. Oh, no, no, the, the the Ponzi scheme was closed. Oh, I found another way for you to have a Ponzi scheme, though. I can still buy gift cards at Sam's for 5% off, but I can't. Uh, t- uh, Target and eBay stopped selling each other's gift but cards. But what if you use a Discover card? Because Sam's Club takes Discover right. to buy your gift cards. Mm-hmm. So not only do you get the, the 5% you know, off, but then you get cash back bonus yeah, on I Discover. Say, yeah. All right. And then, you know, so there's ways to turn those, you know. Yeah, but yeah, but I can't grow money, which is what my original scheme did. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that this isn't the so, marijuana of <laughs> Disney bucks. So, so, so for those who don't know, I once had a scheme where I would buy uh, Target gift cards from eBay and then use those gift cards to buy eBay gift cards from Target. And every time through the loop, I would, because uh, you're buying them at a discount. You're buying the Target cards at 5% off, and you're buying the Target gift cards at 5% off. So you just keep buying each other's gift cards over and over again. And the only reason that it wasn't great, um, uh, fast as it could be, is that the Target gift cards had to be sent to me in the mail. But the eBay gift cards bought from Target were e-gift cards, so I got those within minutes. So I was able to grow a small amount of money to a large amount of money. And then at the end of that, I would use that money to buy Disney gift cards, which I would then use to pay for my vacation. But here's the thing. Until okay. we got smart and said, okay, Colin Madoff. <laughs> uh, I, apparently, I was a very, 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 very small person mm-hmm. in this uh, uh, scheme. <laughs> and there's other people who uh, were making millions. Yeah, they were much more active than I was. Um, so I stayed at Disney for seven nights. And I say, well, it's affordable for me to do that. So I stay at, this time I stayed at Saratoga Springs, which is actually where I uh, own. And uh, so if you were to go to Saratoga Springs, the rack rate, which nobody pays, but the rack rate is $448 a night. Uh huh. Now, I paid $539.12 for the whole week. 
That was my total price for my room at Disney. Um, now, I already have an annual pass, so I didn't have to pay anything to get into the parks. Um, I didn't have to pay anything to get from the airport to Disney and then back, because Disney does that for you with their Magical Express bus. Um, I used my points on my cards to pay for my uh, airplane tickets, so I didn't pay anything for airfare. So, uh, other than paying $539.12 for the week to stay at a Disney resort, uh, the only thing, other thing I had to pay for was food. Which That's, can be expensive if you don't know what you're doing in Which Disney. can be expensive if you don't know what you're doing. I tend to get 10 to 20% off the different restaurants at Disney, so that helps a lot. But uh, that's why I keep going to Disney. It's, you know, if, if you get set up correctly, it can be really cheap. Now, I did have to pay a whole bunch of money to buy the uh, DVC um, timeshare in the first place. Yeah. But I don't cons- But see, the thing is, I can sell that now. Uh, make a thousand dollars profit, I think, at this point. So I look, I look at that as less of uh, money I spent and more money I put into a savings account. And then someday, okay. if I get tired of it, I'll just sell it. And yeah, five hundred thirty-nine dollars twelve cents. That's how much I paid. So uh, anyway, that's that's why we're on to start. Say, I stay at a deluxe resort at Disney, even though I go to Disney as a cheapskate. I am at the very nice resorts. So there was this night. Uh, in this trip, where we came back from uh, uh, Disney Springs, which is the shopping section, and we were waiting for a bus within our resort to take us back to the section of the resort that we actually were at. And we got to see a dramatic presentation of a couple's relationship falling apart. Ooh, was it a uh, wedding proposal that somebody said no to? No, it was drug people with kids... um, uh, apparently, the um, uh, boyfriend, and mm-hmm. we figured out that it was not the hu- the father of the kids, it was okay. a boyfriend, uh, had yelled at one of the kids for pretending to need to go to the bathroom, and that she heard him through the walls of the bathroom yelling at the kid for not really needing to go to the bathroom. And oh, I uh, hate thin bathroom walls. Have so, them at work. We can listen to everything. Ladies at work, we can listen to everything that you say. Yes. So at first we thought that she was crazy and drunk. and that. Uh, uh, but then it became very clear that he is the controlling type who kept trying to tell her how she was supposed to feel. Oh. And she was being very clear that uh, she did not love him and wanted him to go away. So, so we're watching this and thinking, man... How are these people here at Saratoga Springs? This does not seem like the kind of resort where this kind of broken relationship should be. (coughs) And after a while, it became clear they didn't have any clue where they were. Ah, They were at a Disney bus stop waiting for an Uber driver. (laughs) Somehow they had walked onto the resort, and they're trying to tell the Uber driver where they are. And Mm -hmm. they're in a bus stop. the, the The only vehicles they're supposed to come to this spot... Are the Disney, Disney trams, yeah. Not Uber drivers. So then they go walking off on their merry, drunk way, trying to figure out how to find their Uber driver. And I felt much better going, oh, okay. Thanks for the show. It was, <laughs> it was, it was interesting. Um, so anyway, the actual trip, like I said, it was, uh, uh, it was very humid. Um, but uh, because we go to Disney cheap, mm-hmm. uh, we don't feel like we need to ring out every second of the day as yeah. we may have in the past. Or it, it, it's Shaggy, if you were to Disney, you know, oh, that's the, very important. When I did my five day Disney trek, yes. you know, I wanted to hit the park. So, you know, it was, it was important to try and do as much as I could because I wasn't going to be there. You know, I did, I have no idea when I'm going to be able to go back. So, you know, it was somewhat important to try and get the most out of the experience. And it was an expensive trip for me because I don't, you know, yeah, so we uh, we didn't even set alarm clocks. We just kind of woke up whenever. I think we mostly got out of the uh, rooms around noon every day. Um, <laughs> ate ma- ate um, uh, oatmeal that we brought with us. 
Because, you know, if you can eat you know, oatmeal in your room for breakfast, then uh, that helps get the food cost down a lot. Yeah. Especially when you fly southwest. There's three of you. You fly southwest. You have six checked bags. Yeah. You really only have enough clothes for maybe a bag and a half. <laughs> you can pack your meals, is what you're saying. Yeah. So we have we have luggage that we just fill up with food. <laughs> so 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 you had one of those little uh, individual burners, you know, that you see in cheap, uh, you know, apartments. And then you guys had, uh, you know, well, there's a fridge and a microwave in the room. Okay. So we were covered. So you just had one duffel bag full of ramen noodle cups. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Explain. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's so Co- Coke socks. Wait so, a second. So this couple uh, apparently they had um, <laughs> they, they had gotten the, the Coca Cola store. Okay, thank and you. That's a, that's that's much more benign than what I thought it Ooh. was. And the uh, the bag had like gotten ripped, and so as we were walking towards the bus stop, we started finding. Uh, we found some socks. There probably was other stuff that they lost, but we only found these socks. And as we're sitting there listening to this story, we realized that these socks that we found were probably his. We found his Coke socks, and then we found her Mary Jane's. No, no, shoes. You know, shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no, that's, uh, that's not how we say that. We, we found a bag full of Mickey's. <laughs> you know, and then we found his cracked pipe. Yeah, his cracked pipe. It, was, it had a big crack down the side of it. It was a corn cob one. <laughs> yeah. See, he, sh- he sure was at the happiest place on earth. Now, wasn't he? <laughs> so, other than that, it was just you know, it was a vacation. It was a fun vacation. Um, I was I was a bit happy to get back, which is a good thing to be on a vacation. I always like to be happy to I'm be home. Never happy to come back. <laughs> I'll tell you what. When I come back, I have this weird sensation, and Mike. I know you guys travel with your animals a lot of times. You take them with you, so you probably you probably don't experience this, but it's a weird and somewhat disturbing thing. I go away for a week or so, you know, especially when we went to Tennessee, and it was like, okay, we're in this Airbnb, you know, nice, clean, crisp mountain air, whatever. We come home, I walk in the door, and I went, wow, my house smells like dog. This is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> We actually, when we get back, the first thing we do is go around the house to find all the cats. <laughs> because, you know, people come in to take care of Yeah. Or there are a couple, like the, the last time that we went away, we had a friend staying here with every with the, with the animals. And um, she still swears that two of the cats don't actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> Because they did not come out once. I had to go to the videotape on the nanny cam <laughs> to see, yes, they did come out at night. Well, okay. Um, but we go around and basically count, make pets. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get home sure to be scolded around. rigorously by my cat. She's, uh... Now, the last time I went away, it was when I went up to Maine, it was just me. Mm-hmm. So when I came back, it was, okay, I pulled in the driveway, called Kim, and said, okay, I'm going in the backyard. And she just let the dogs out to see how they would react. And that was when the first time that I was away with the puppy. Mm-hmm. And he went absolutely bonkers when he saw me back. So, Yeah. I, uh, I like the story of leaving the dog at, out, the puppy, in the house while you were gone. Oh, was, yeah. That was lucky. So we, uh, we went out and... Tyson is pretty much crated when, because, all right, so we had some scraps of carpet that somebody had pulled up, and they were, you know, they were in good shape, but it was like loop carpet, Mm -hmm. and we, the original plan was I was going to recover one of the cat towers with it, but it wound up being too thick, so we put a piece of it in the back room, because the the floor in our back room gets cold, it's basically just a concrete slab. It was a porch or patio, and they enclosed it. So yeah. it's really not a true floor. It's it's kind of like a framed patio. It's more like a three season room than it is yeah. an addition. Yeah. So and it's just the vinyl flooring down there, um, the vinyl plank flooring. So it's mm. the floor gets cold. So we put it yeah. down there. He starts chewing it up, and he—it's like one of those old scenes where you find a thread on the sweater in the cartoon, and they just start oh, pulling yeah. it, and the whole sweater disappears. Well, that's exactly what was happening with the rug. So, the fact that we went out and Kim, 
I, I am going to blame this on her because she was the last one out. She didn't put him in his crate. And we got home, we were like, um, oh. But luckily, he did not destroy anything. Uh, we are learning that he cannot have toys that have the uh, the polyfill stuffing. Okay. Because he makes snow with them. <laughs> it's like that picture where, thank goodness you're home, this exploded, and I have no idea how it happened. <laughs> you know, puppy in the middle of the room, can, enveloped by all this, you know. Yeah. I- yeah, this this is one. This is why I can't have an Amazon camera. Although I am thinking about it, um, <laughs> we we actually leave the TV on in the living room during the day for the bird. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's storming, we will put on like SWAT or Die Hard or something like that for the dogs. <laughs> well, see the the Amazon camera is sitting next to a. Um, one of these. An Echo? It's a, one of the newer Echoes. Uh, but the Echo is on my account. Okay. And the camera is on my mom's account, because it's her mm-hmm. house. Uh, but it just happens to be sitting there. So she can uh, turn on the microphone and speak through the camera. And since mine doesn't know that... Yeah. They don't know about each other. You're crossing actually, the streams, basically. It actually will listen to the command and start doing stuff. Hmm. Hmm. yeah i my wife is my wife was not a fan of the echoes but i think she is slowly uh, you know uh, slowly getting used to the one in the garage to open and close the garage door (laughs) you know although she keeps calling it alexis instead of alexa (laughs) i used to have a co-worker named alexis and she actually had to rename hers to uh something else I think I think you only have the options unless they change it to it's either Echo, Amazon, or Alexa, or computer. computer. Oh, they added oh, really? Yeah, they they talked to Star Trek, and found out hey they don't hold a copyright on name activation by the name computer because it's a generic object. Okay. So. Yeah. So uh, you have a, a story we so, probably need to talk about. Yeah, Mike, I was really surprised the other day when I when I saw your note about Spike Lee passing away, <laughs> or uh, Stanley. I'm sorry, I was I was reading I was reading a New Zealand newspaper, and evidently they can't keep things straight either. Uh, for the obituary headline: Characters first, superheroes next. Spike Lee dies at age 95. With a picture of a noticeably elderly white man. <laughs> and, and, and of course, someone says, there's something different about Spike Lee, but I can't quite place it. <laughs> and then another one that says, Spike Lee is 61 and most certainly alive. <laughs> so. But yeah, Stan Lee, boy, I, you know, I hadn't heard it. Obviously, he's an older man. You know, I didn't hear anything about really bad things about his health. You know, I mean, we'd heard about Ruth Bader Ginsburg falling and breaking three ribs and being hospitalized for it. I knew that uh, Stanley had a bout with pneumonia not too long ago. And we know he's having some mental issues. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's starting to. You know, but so for this is. uh, you know, it it was I I didn't see it publicized as much as I thought I would. Oh, I saw. But maybe it's lots. just my feed didn't you know? Yeah, my feed. Oh up. God! Every entertainment related outlet. Yeah. T- TMZ, Sci Fi, Fandango, um, NBC News, CNN. It was it was everywhere. Okay. Well, good, because I, I, I was feeling like it was underplayed, and it shouldn't have been. No, it was not. Now, okay, good. And it's kind of funny, like, um, remember, I remember the day that Farrah Fawcett died. Everybody made a big deal about that, but then later that evening, Michael Jackson died, and everybody was like, Farrah who? Yeah. So that morning, the guy that did the voice of Hal, the computer, in 2001, A Space Odyssey, had passed away. Okay, but he's just a voice on a computer, on a on a well, movie. You know? N- true. I mean, he's, he's like the guy who plays Chewbacca. 
All right. I don't, I, I don't know that name. And you are not a true fan. The force is not with you. No, I no. I'm a Trekkie, not a, a Warzy. Uh, you know, those are the two distinguishing things. Star Price Wars. Yeah, I finally saw Solo. You know, I haven't bothered to watch the other one, Rebel One or whatever in the heck it's called. Oh, so you watched the Rogue bad one? one and not the yeah. I, okay, I one. thought Solo was okay. I I okay. Yeah. I, I thought Solo was okay. As well, yeah. But so, Rogue One is better. Mm-hmm. I'm Blair saying that uh, Stan was going to be on her next next picks. Now she's going to have to reconfigure that. Yep. Which is a reminder, oh. it's coming up soon. Yep. Yes. Everybody needs to be thinking about it. Come Thanksgiving, the site will be open again. We will blast it out through all of our social media contacts on how you can how you can put in your picks as well as get other people to put in picks and get your referral points. This year's death pool is uh, pretty well um, uh, done. <laughs> well, it, it's not over till the fat lady sings, but uh, the no, glacier I... d- does have a fairly commanding lead. And the first strike. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if if George H. W. Bush and Bob Barker manage to die, he'll be the first one ever to go five for five. Yeah, and uh, somebody will be talking. <laughs> I, I I have to go back and look, but I believe this that he's already the first person to ever have three picks in one year. I think so. I so, think so. I think the most we've ever had before is two. And as of right now, it's got what almost a thirty point lead on Red Rhino. So who does Red Rhino have? Uh, the amazing Jonathan Burt Reynolds, who is gone. Wait, I need to update that. Uh, Suge Knight and Leah Bracknell along with Robin Leach. So he had two, Burt Reynolds and Robin Leach. But why Red Rhino? I mean, he's fourth. Well, I, remember, I haven't updated this, so this is a little bit out of date. Oh, Red, Red, Red Rhino is actually second. Oh, I see, Burt Reynolds. Yeah, Got Burt it. Reynolds, yeah. I, oh, okay. I'm, um, I missed out when uh, Burt Reynolds went. And, uh, and Quink is in third with 92 points. Yeah. Uh, Miley Cyrus, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Stevie Wonder are the three left on Quink's list. So, I mean, unless somebody like Necro Spankula with Corey Feldman well, and Macaulay Culkin push through. Listen, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I mean, that, with that injury, if there are complications oh, and Lord. somehow Ruth Bader Ginsburg passes... I don't want to see all the political posts if Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies. Well, yeah, I'm not going there. I'm not even I, talking about that part. No, oh, good if Lord. If Ruth Bader Ginsburg passes... After all this election stuff, I can't do... I No, I can't do it. Quink, Quink will jump into the lead. I may have to become a Canadian if that happens, Mike. Uh, was, let's see. Jenny... Jenny Shush... Um, Donald Trump, yeah, that's not happening. No. Uh, if George H. W. Bush passes, that's a push because the glacier would get it. And Betty White, no. So uh, Jenny is pretty much out of it. Quink and um, what did I say? Red Rhino. Those really are the only two that have a chance of 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 throwing the glacier here. Yeah. Is even Eric C. I have no idea how many points <laughs> I have. Um, <laughs> I can tell you. Uh, you none. have no, yeah, no. Oh, hold on, Margaret Kidder, right? Yeah, yeah. Margaret Kidder. So yeah, and plus eight, that. plus eight bonus points. So he's Colin sitting at sixty-five forty-three, sixty-five point forty-three. Oh, points. so I'm last on the host you're, side. You're last on the host side, pal. Ah. Uh, Unless Matthew J. Watkins passed away, and you're going to tell me in December, oh, he passed away in <laughs> April. Didn't you? No, say? he's still alive. Yeah, wait, you Alexa, know. Alexa, is Matthew J. Watkins still alive? You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's not famous enough. Here, let's just try. Let's. Let, Alexa, is course, Norman Lloyd still alive? <laughs> yeah. 
He is. Yeah. So okay. Um, so Matthew Watkins is not famous enough for Alexa to realize. <laughs> well, there's according many, to Wikipedia, he's still alive. So okay. okay. There's, too, there's too many Matthew Watkins. There's also an ice hockey player, according to Wikipedia. Yeah. So so um, uh, I amazingly enough put some content in the list. Woohoo! While I was at Disney. <laughs> And I, so I found this list of the 30 worst TV shows of the 1980s. Okay. Now, unfortunately, it is one of those slideshow things, but it seems to work pretty well. So I was just interested to see how many of these we've actually seen and if we agree that these are terrible. Oh, this sounds horrible. All right. So the first one, okay. Manimal, having a man with the ability to transform him into any animal who can help solve crimes. Uh, only lasted four episodes. No wonder I didn't see it. Basically, I have heard of it. So, that is... I, I've heard of it as a butt of a joke. Yeah. 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 Small Wonder. I, I, I think I, small wonder. I remember that one. Yeah. With Vicky the Robot. Yep. After MASH. It actually ran for four seasons. I'm surprised by that one. After MASH, don't remember seeing that one. Uh, After MASH was the failed um, spinoff from MASH. Yep. I uh, that Again, I know that is a bit of a joke from um, Celebrity Jeopardy. Yeah. Casablanca. Two seasons, amazingly. Casablanca, three episodes. Casablanca came up recently in a book that I was reading that has a, um, a uh, alien AI named Skippy. And he likes to torture um, the people that uh, are on the ship with him. And one of the ways that he tortures is that he managed to get all the episodes of Casablanca um, recorded digitally so that he could uh, force people to watch it. Um, next one, Battlestar or Galactica 1980. I never watched the original show that it was based off of, so I wouldn't have watched the 10 episodes. Okay, I this. watched this and it made no damn sense to me whatsoever. Because no. Adama was like the only character still there, right? What happened? What happened to Boxy? All right, he was still a kid. Can't tell me everybody else died off. That makes no sense to me. And why are they going around? Anyway, yeah, it was terrible. Uh, next one was uh, one of the boys, which it's kind of like Cool Kids. It's on right which, now. Which, by the way, Mike, you got us hooked. All right, my wife and I. Thank you for pointing that show out. No, big I, fans. You got to thank Colin. Okay, Colin, big fans. And sadly, I'm hearing that it's on the chopping block. No, it's so good. Probably doesn't appeal to the younger viewers, is why. I think it needs better writing. I, but well, the cast is great. I, I like it. I, I, it's, it's, I told my wife, I'm like. It is a spotlight for the older actors. Because yeah. it's like every show is like, who's that? I know that guy. It's a cameo. I, I know and him. Kim is like, Vicki Lawrence does not look like she belongs on this show. No, she looks great. If she's she really, well, she is. She, she's 61. I looked it up. And she looks gr absolutely amazing. So this one was. Um, it starred Mickey Rooney, of course, Meg Ryan, Dana Carvey, and Nathan Lane. And it's the premise of a grandfather moving in with his college-aged grandson and grandson's roommate. And you look at this going, um, that's a, an amazing cast. They're still trying to make that show today. Yeah. Just with different actors. Next one uh, is uh, The Powers of Matthew Starr. I vaguely remember this. Um, yeah, no, I don't remember it at all. An alien from outer space who has special powers, but is trying to be just like any other teen. No, no, I wasn't gonna. He's a spear. Uh, next up was uh, also known as Pablo. No, and I'm looking at this going, really? So uh, the the verb here says is. Uh, it's kind of like Seinfeld, except with a Hispanic American. It only lasted six episodes because it was uh, ultimately too crass and stereotypical. Next one up, Life with Lucy. I have a problem here. Okay. 
Because the blurb says, after the Cosby show became a comeback hit for ABC. Did I miss something? I thought the Cosby show was on NBC. Did it move at some point, or is this a typo? Well, there was the second Cosby show. I thought that was just called Cosby. That might have been what they, that might be what they meant. Well, it was on CBS, ABC, and Fox at one point. The Cosby Show. Oh, hold on. Let me double check here. Broadcast check history Cosby. and ratings. No, hold on. I'm pretty uh, sure Cosby Show was always NBC. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. I think it might have moved networks. Um, Because remember, there was eight seasons. So... Anyway. um, Oh, NBC. Original network NBC. Never changed. Preceded by The Bill Cosby Show. Hmm. Was that... Nope, that's completely different. And related shows, a different world, which was on NBC. Right. Yeah. So, so okay, got to be a typo. Yeah, it has to be a typo. Yeah. Uh, so next up was uh, uh, she's the sheriff. The Suzanne Summers two season show where she's a sheriff. Kind this, of remember that. No, this kind of is like a sheriff local version of uh, Private Benjamin, I guess. Yeah. Ace Crawford, Private Eye. Tim Conway starred in the parody of a detective genre about a bumbling P.I. Yeah, no. No. Next nah. up is a show that, Cr- that Shaggy knows lots about. Well, I don't know that much about it, cause, but I I know enough that I got quite a few episodes. Auto Man, <laughs> which is the Tron. It, it wanted to trade in on Tron, is what well, it wanted it, to do. It says right here, from the producers of Tron. Yeah, so... A police officer and computer programmer creates an AI system to fight crime that generates hologram capable of leaving the computer to fight crime. Twelve episodes in the first season, ABC shut it down. It wasn't great, all right? It, it wasn't great, but it's funny oh. to watch. Yes. Think- it's like, by the way, if anybody out there happens to have English copies of Turbo Teen, all right, the cartoon that lasted less than one season, all right, I'm looking for those. That's the one Good where the that. teen turns into the, the red car. The teen he gets, gets hot, he turns into a car. Yeah, when yeah, he gets yeah. cold, he turns back into a boy. And the only reason it didn't take off is because Transformers came out at this uh, like uh, after the third episode was released. Transformers came out. I want pole okay. position. No. Yes, I want pole position. So if anybody knows what pole position is, uh, but uh, Auto Man has a relationship then with uh, Life with Lucy because it's actually Desi Arnaz Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead with the next one there. Uh, Bad Cats. Mm-hmm. Never heard of it. That's uh, one of Michelle Pfeiffer's first starring roles. That only lasted... Ten episodes were made. Four episodes were shown. And apparently we don't know anything else about it other than that. Okay, so the next one, Beyond Westworld. You'd think, with the resurgence of Westworld, this would be, you know... Uh, a, a, a wanted thing. Well, Beyond Westworld. See, this was this was a TV ap- adaptation. Yeah. Followed up from two movies that never works. And never, very rarely does a TV adaptation from a movie work. Yeah. Canceled after three airings. Doesn't even say three episodes. Three airings. Next up this, was uh, yeah. This one, Bl- Black's Magic. Yeah. Mm-mm. Never heard of it. No, I've never heard of it either. But it stars Hal Linden as a crime-solving magician. Sure. Uh, okay, another case in point. Breaking Away. This was a movie, or it was based on trying to ride the success of a movie. And this was actually a prequel, mm-hmm. which is... Stupid. Although I noticed that the the face that's turned away from us is um, Jackie Earl Haley, who actually was in both the movie and uh, next up, Concrete Cowboys. The, what the, fi- the original film in 1979 starred Tom Selleck. CBS 
optioned the story as a TV series starring Jerry Reed and Jeffrey Scott in 81. And after seven episodes and not even two months on the air, the network canceled the show due to low ratings and poor critical reception. Then next is uh, The Devlin Connection, a 1982 series starring Rock Hudson. Along with his son, he solves weekly crimes. Uh, apparently, they didn't really know what the show was supposed to be, so it actually changed styles multiple times. It only showed 12 episodes. All right, I skipped, I skipped the next one and went straight to number 20, Gung Ho. Now, they say Gung Ho was a mediocre film in 1986, and I have to argue that point. It was a very funny film. I agree with that. You know, but Hollywood decided to try it as a TV series. Uh, the mediocrity continued, they say. Viewers didn't respond positively as the culture class concept of Japanese company taking ownership of an American car plant. Nine episodes later, it was canceled. And what he, he skipped was Fathers and Sons, which lasted four se- episodes on NBC about a father who's also a baseball coach. And apparently, oh. nobody cares. Sorry, Hard Merlin ball. Olsen, whoever the heck that is. He's an ex-football player, I believe. Ah. Um, no, ex-football players should have kept to my my two dads. That that was a good use of an ex-football player. Who? He Butkus. ran. Yeah. Who was? Butkus. He ran the shop downstairs. Oh. Uh, no, um, wait a second. I, you also have to add in Webster. I was going to say, Alex Karras. Didn't realize he was a football player. Yes. Because yep. he probably wasn't a bear. Wasn't he? I think he was a bear. He was a bear? I think so. Okay, apparently, uh, if you want to be a football player on television, <laughs> be a bear. You have to work for one of the worst franchises in the, in the entire series. Just because it's been around um, so long. Well, at least they know how to do... They're no. doing really well this year. <laughs> so. so, Hardball... A buddy cop TV series that was trying to copy the Lethal Weapon franchise. I no. Actually, eighteen episodes though. Um, it was turned into a. Uh, do you know the next one? Because I I like yes. to skip it. It's Helltown. Okay. Premiered in the fall of 1985 and followed a Catholic priest who led a parish in the high cre- crime area of Los Angeles. But he wasn't a normal priest. He was a cool priest. He was a formal criminal himself. Um, he could connect with the community, but he couldn't connect with its audiences. Uh, Only lasted half the season. Next up, The Highwayman. was a combination of Mad Max and Knight Rider set in the immediate future. Never heard of it. Nine episodes, I and then it was gone. I remember the vehicles. To this day, I remember the vehicles of that show. That's all I remember. And cool. That, that was the era when I was watching Airwolf and Knight Rider, and you give me a show that has cool cars in it, and I was going to watch it. Hmm. Misfits of Science. Uh, that's a. I, yeah, I remember that show a lot. I'm jumping forward because some of these were gonna we were gonna take forever because we're only on. So Misfits of Science, I I kind of remember that one. That was awesome. I okay, so that's one I need to find because I don't remember it too much. Yeah, I would love to find that one. Okay, um, and then Nero Wolf never. Nah, it's another detective one. That was a bad, bad. Cause Nero Wolf, that with uh, Timothy Hutton, is one of the best TV shows ever made. That is a different Nero Wolf. Man, Phoenix. I remember the Phoenix. Barely, but I remember the Phoenix. Man, I. I guess a lot of them I'm remembering. No, because like there was one that I really liked, but I can't remember when it was. 1992 is when it aired. Because I want to find this. It's called the Hat Squad. Do you remember that one, Mike? Oh, right. It, just by saying it, I say no. <laughs> well, it was on for a cop and his wife uh, adopt three young boys whose parents were cops and or killed in the line of duty. The three boys became the Hat Squad, part of a police department that tries to track um, do, 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 track down violent offenders while still wanting to average uh, avenge their parents' death. There's, many, there's a bunch of it on YouTube. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to grab it because it was only it was one season. I don't even know how many episodes there were, but uh, one season. But this was one of the ones. This was one of the few ones where we got selected to watch pilot episodes of shows, and then we were called like 30 minutes after the pilot was over and asked what we thought. We had to tune to a specific channel on our box that was only showing anything from like 7 to 8 o'clock at night. And so we were this pilot test group where basically they quizzed us about the show to make sure that we watched it and then asked our opinion of it. And this was one of them that we watched that the entire family said, yes, we like the show. And then they put it on the air and nobody else liked it. So, and like, right, so, wh- where's the the? Wasn't there one with the little short guy that was like, uh, I say short guy, but you know, really short guy, like three foot tall guy, um, where they were like PIs or they solved crimes or something. I don't remember the PI one. That, I, I was thinking when you were saying that either you're talking about the wizard, but I don't think I'm talking about the wizard, but I could be. Um, not the Wizard of Oz, stupid. Um, 1989. Nope, it's not the movie. It's a TV show. TV show in 90s with small person. Other word for small person. Um, God, the Wizard TV series intro. Maybe that is it. I don't know. But, uh, I wish I could actually see something. But yeah, maybe. All right, so let let's jump to the other list. Yes, which is the most memorable shows. Okay, okay. because just going to the first two, mm-hmm. I want to see how many of these are either have either have been or are being rebooted. Okay. Oh, that's so. a good. That's a that's or, or should be. Okay. Yes. So so Dallas number one Dallas technically was not rebooted. It was a continuation. Right. Okay. Magnum PI was rebooted <laughs> is and, in the middle of being rebooted yes and i'm and watching it it's on my dvr you may, be, you may be the only one really really they're gonna cancel that show too i'm i'm hearing that's on oh that's on the bubble we my wife and i like that show um murder she wrote <laughs> my it, wife it, has it, seen every episode yeah this one you can't even say remake because it's a plot that's been done Oh, so many it times. Dozens of times. Uh, Cheers. You can't remake that show. No. Oh, they're, I think they're planning to do another um, Frasier. So sort of yeah, still doing well, it. Well, that was a spinoff. But yeah. yeah. The A-Team, they tried that movie, and even with Bradley I, Cooper couldn't make it work. I thought that movie was awesome. Really? I Honestly, I, like I have not watched it all the way through. Did he just freeze? I think so. Yep, <laughs> he just—he's just sitting there, daydreaming about the A team. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, give me a single ping range, please. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's on, He's unavailable now. So I don't know what happened. <laughs> Mike hates Skype. Uh, at least he's still around. He's still alive. His machine hasn't. All right, Mike. There you are. I hate Skype. <laughs> We're gonna sit here going, man. He really loves the A team. He's just looking off. <laughs> he's just into the again, so lovingly the with A team. So, as I was saying, Bradley Cooper, I yes. thought was excellent. I thought Liam Neeson as Hannibal was a good fit. I even thought um, Rampage Jackson was good as B.A., but uh, I'm going to get the guy's name wrong, but uh, Charlotte Char- Char- Copley yeah. was an amazing Murdoch. I thought I liked that movie. You know, I'm going to have to, I, I'll admit, I fast forward watched it. I didn't. Like sit down and watch it in its totality. I will have to sit and watch that movie. Maybe that'll be one of the things I'll do on vacation. Is there I will I will sit and watch movies. So uh, Family Ties, not going to remake that. Uh, you can't. 
Uh, Dukes of Hazard. They did the movie. They did the movie, and I'm the only person that liked the first movie. I'm the only one that that liked it. Different, Different strokes. strokes. God, God help you if you try to make this movie. Can't do that. <laughs> you would have to like switch the races around. It would, where it was a no, black family that a, adopted white kids. There is no, no you'd way. You'd have to do a lot. <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't. No. No. Um, you might as well try to redo you know the what? toy. <laughs> Free Freeform redid it as the Fosters. Oh, I just had a conversation with somebody about the toy the other day, at work, no doubt. <laughs> it was like he's he he him and his wife. It's his wife's second marriage, and uh, you know, I, at least I think was that who I was talking to. I don't remember. I was I was listening to something. I was talking to somebody. A toy. And, yeah. Oh. A toy. A toy. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyway, but he was trying to explain to his child why that movie could not be made again. <laughs> and they were no, way too young to can't. understand. All right, Hill Street Blues. Uh, it's been done. Yeah, to death. Who's the boss? No. If they did that, no. Tony there's Danza no would want to do it again. There's, there's no there, reason to do it. There's no reason. You know Miami who, Vice, you know who they, they get, though? That. They'd get Matt LeBlanc to play Tony Danza's part. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Um, Miami Vice, they did the movie. Yep. No good. Uh, St. Elsewhere, yeah, how many... How many doctor shows do we have? Let's just be clear about this, all right? If a show ever winds up ending the way St. Elsewhere did, I... There will be riots in the streets. (laughs) Okay? That was the most frustrating ending until Lost. (laughs) All right, next up, Designing Women. Uh, no. 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 Uh, Dynasty. Didn't they? Isn't that rebooted already? Uh, yeah, but I think it was been canceled. Okay. Knight Rider. They've already it, tried it. Twice. Yes, because they had Knight Rider 2000 and then Team okay. Knight Rider. They, so, and then they had the reboot where he was a Ford Mustang. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant no. by Knight Rider 2000. Because they had like no. the movie. No, Knight Rider 2000 no. is completely separate. Oh, was it? Yep. I guess I don't have... Is that the one where he's in the future and it's in the 57 Chevy? Yes. I don't. Yes. That's the one I don't have. I kind of want that one. And then there was Team Knight Rider. Forgot about that one. Well, there was Knight Rider and then Team Knight Rider. And then there yep. was another Knight Rider that was, on, that was actually on network television. Really? Really? I missed that one too. Yeah, That's the Val, one where he's a Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer was yeah, the voice uh, okay. of Mustang. I must have missed one in between there somewhere. So that that was on right around the same time that they rebooted Bionic Woman. Now I've got the Val Kilmer one. Right. All right. Oh, I team, actually liked that one. Oh, team Knight Rider was a, syn- a syndicated show where there was multiple cars. Right. I know that. Okay. that well, there was like a, a car. There was a motorcycle. There was yeah. You know, multiple vehicles. Airplane. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Facts of life, and they used the wrong picture. They didn't use the original Facts of Life cast. Why are you using? I want to see Mrs. Garrett because right. that's the one they could get Clooney into. Well, I understand yes. that, but no, I want to see Mrs. Garrett. But Clooney was around one season with Mrs. Garrett. Yeah, at least when they. I, built I think the that shop. was someone's signed picture. Like, so okay, that was just their enough. excuse to get their signed picture in. Yeah, I right. don't want to uh, see that stupid redhead kid. Cagney and Lacey. Didn't they try to redo this one? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Called, it was called Rizzoli and Isles. Yeah. <laughs> yep. My wife loved that show. Growing Pains. Not going to happen. Yeah, not that cast. MacGyver. Already tried it. <laughs> still going. Is it still, still going? going? Oh, yeah. Never watched it. I, I watch it. It's uh, it, it's a extremely guilty pleasure. Heart to Heart. This actually was rumored a little bit when um, Denozo was leaving NCIS. Oh, really? Oh, I yeah, never because thought of that. The, the guy who plays Denoz- who played Denozo on NCIS was a huge Heart to Heart fan. And if anybody watched the show, they remembered that the, the guy who played Jonathan Hart played his dad in that show. Well, for when he was leaving, he goes, nobody's ever seen my mom. Could we get the lady who played Jennifer Hart... To come in and play my mother. And th- when that talk was going on, they were like, could we get the hearts back together 
for either a made for TV movie or a relaunch series. So they were talking about the original actor still. Interesting. Uh, cool Kids, by the way, is on the likely renewed, not canceled list. Oh, thank oh, goodness. Okay. Um, what about Magnum P.I.? This... Oh, let's get... Okay, yeah, sorry. Cosby next, Show. Next up. No, no way in hell. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> it ain't happen. Uh-uh. Not, unless, not unless it's on prison TV. All right. Nope. <laughs> A different world. Nope. nope. It's like saying 227. L.A. Law. They already remade this so many times. Yeah. Taxi. No. Nope. One, because we'll never have another Kaufman. Roseanne. I, we already did this twice did now. It? Yeah, and the Connors is supposedly doing well. Uh, Chips. Uh, we made a movie. And it was terrible. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's one of the ones my wife watches over and over again. <laughs> New Heart. Technically. <laughs> Nothing current. Yeah. Uh, moonlighting. Oh, that Always would be, trying. Yeah, that would be horrible with Bruce Willis nowadays. Golden Girls. What? Just Betty White? Uh, no. They. Was it Netflix or Amazon that was trying to do a remake of this, but instead of four old ladies, it was four older gay men? See, I... I told my wife I thought that the cool kids was kind of like an edgier Golden Girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know about edgier. I mean, Golden Girls was not unedgy. No, but they, but they, it was a softer edge. It wasn't as hard edged. I don't think. Yeah. Star Trek: Next Generation. Well, let's see here. After this, <laughs> after this, we had Deep Space Nine. Uh, then we had Voyager, Voyager. Then we had Enterprise. Now we've got. <laughs> Now we've got the Orville, which is really good. So keep doing the Orville. Orb one, engage. Yeah. You know, I, I, Actually, and now we've got Picard coming up, which who knows how good Picard's going to be. Better be good. We're just, otherwise, Patrick Stewart's going to rip everybody a new one. Oh, yeah. Lord. There's a, th- this, okay. site, this site is just... Yeah, it's good. This con- is going to be our... This could be our go-to if we ever run out of show material because there's just lists of every... Yeah. yeah. So uh, let me go through real quick. Uh, Happy Together, likely canceled on CBS. Um, the Big Bang Theory has already been canceled. Or clo- well, it's, 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 it's On this finale. list, it's called yeah. canceled. Uh, let's see. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, canceled. Uh, I Zombie, canceled. Jane the Virgin, canceled. Some of these are just shows that have already been... They're ending their run. Or yeah, Gotham. Uh, Lethal Weapon, likely canceled. Rel, likely canceled. The Gifted, likely canceled. Blind Spot, likely canceled. Actually, didn't I read The Gifted might have been picked up by Netflix? Or something? I did at, not At the moment, read. it's still owned by... It's still on Fox. Okay. Yeah. So if it does and get picked still- up, it has to be canceled first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I Feel Bad has officially been canceled. On NBC. I think that's the first cancellation of the year. Um, Midnight Texas, likely canceled. Uh, everything else is either renewed or likely renewed. Or certain good, renewed. so Magnum's good. Really? Good. Um, yep. Interesting. Um, now, we didn't get to this, but this did happen last week. Uh, it was Election Day. And uh, we do hope everybody went out there and voted. I'm only going to talk about one particular election. All right, because and it's not going to have to do with Illinois. All right, this is going to have to do with our friends in Nevada, who thought that it was a good idea to elect a dead pimp. <laughs> okay, there. I have two stories about this. For those okay. who don't know, okay, Dennis Hoff, the owner of the Moonlight Bunny Bunny Ranch, who was on who, which was featured in HBO's Cat House, which was back when HBO would show borderline porn after in the midnight hour Mm -hmm. um and its sister station cinemax had the moniker of skinemax at that time um he decided he was going to run for state legislature because because his motto was in donald trump's presidency anybody can get elected right so he he said or he ran, then he died. 
But he did. My, underst- my understanding that he, he died after the deadline for his name to be removed from the ballot. Yes. According so, to statute 293.302, his name was required to still be on the ballot. There was no time to select an alternate or to reprint ballots or to do any of that. So his name was still on there. However, at all the polling places, they put up signs. It said, Notice of Death of Candidate, 2018 General Election. In accordance with Nevada Revised Statutes 293.302, Please be advised, the following candidate is deceased. Dennis Hoff, candidate for State Assembly District 36. Please note the name of the deceased candidate is on the ballot and must remain on the ballot. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact Nye County Clerk, and then they give the phone number. Right. So, he won. Yes. So, two things here. One, there is no way to sugarcoat... (laughs) If you're the Democratic opponent, <laughs> but there was there was a very did you see the uh, there was a uh, Colbert did you see the Colbert clip on that? No, they actually did a parody of her um, of her uh, speech. oh her concession speech her, her okay. concession speech. So it was very funny. By the way, he didn't win by a little either. Sixty eight point two nine percent of the vote went to him. Now here's the other thing. Suppose there's a theory that well Nevada is Nevada is a red state anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So by electing Hoff, they get to appoint someone yeah. of their choosing without electing. Correct. This to is take to fill his seat. This is the epitome of voting for the party. Well, here, here's the interesting question I have. Actually, mm-hmm. didn't even think about this till just now. Did he get more votes because he's dead than he would have gotten as a living pimp? I don't think so because actual projections had him out ahead. Yes, which is crazy. But being ahead and winning by sixty-eight percent are two different things. Well, yeah. I- Maybe name recognition, just because his name... I mean, you can't exactly give equal time to both parties when someone dies. Wait, just If I would have voted, okay, and I had to choose between... And let's, let's say I'm of that... I have no idea where my political persuasion is anymore. But let's say I would have voted... Your pirate party, by the way. I probably would have picked the libertarian candidate. Instead Which of voting I don't for know that there was... <laughs> Oh, I'm sure there was a Nevada. I, I think. Well, I mean, the graph I just saw only had two well, candidates on it. I heard whoever was libertarian was so low. It was so low it wasn't counted. Maybe. I'm just saying I, I would have voted have for the libertarian instead of voting for a pimp. For a dead pimp. No, no, a living pimp. A living pimp. Okay. <laughs> now, if I had the choice of, oh, I could vote for a dead pimp. At least it's for the Republican candidate. And we will replace him with somebody that like okay fine I'll just vote for that. <laughs> I would say I would have I would have had an easier time. Well, I assume, but you never know. They may replace him with a Republican hoe instead of a pimp. I mean, it could be that way. I think many people would consider that better than the pimp. <laughs> if if he was a Democrat and he died, could you imagine if the Democratic Party appointed Stormy Daniels? Oh my God! Yeah. You know, just to piss off Trump. <laughs> you know, but they they could still try and appoint Stormy Daniels, but that would be like shooting himself well, in the I mean, foot. This is a county. This this is a local district. It's not. A, it's not a a, a federal district. It's well, not it's, a national. But it, still, it's it's state legislature. Yes. Yes. So, but I mean, that could be a stepping stone to a national pulpit. Exactly. You know? So, um, I, I just said Shaggy this. Have either of you heard of this new trailer that's come out for the new Pokemon Detective Pikachu movie? I've heard about it because isn't Ryan Reynolds the voice of Pikachu? Yes. And I I refuse to watch it because I can honestly say I know absolutely nothing about Pokemon yeah. except that that thing is called Pikachu. And somebody chooses him. Yep. That's all I know. 
All I know is that I, I watched this trailer and I was like, "Is Ron? He's yeah. not hurting for money. No, no, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just kind of going. What has Ron? I mean, what's he doing? It's, it's five, no, it's, it's 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 amazing. I was looking at this going, is this real? Because this looks a lot like well, a. It's Deadpool published on joke. Warner Brothers. Oh, it has to be site, real. So it's just it's ridiculous. Well, do we want to take a look at the quick trailer? That's why. I, that's why I said. Okay. Like, let's Sorry. Sure, so let's take a look at it. To, to Rhyme City, City. A, a celebration of the harmony between it's like a live action and Pokemon. Pokemon. Because it's Tim, necessary. Your dad was a legend in this precinct. If you were anything like your dad, I'm not. I remember. You wanted to be a Pokemon trainer when you were young. Yeah, How come that didn't really work yeah. out? Someone there? Whoever you are, he has a stapler. Know how to use this. Oh, jeez. Here we go. I know. You can't understand me. But put down the stapler or I will electrocute you. Did you just talk? Whoa. Did you just understand me? Oh, my God. You can understand me. And I've been so lonely. They try to talk to me all the time. All they hear is Pika Pika. You can hear him, right? Pika Pika. Yeah, he's adorable. You're adorable. They can't understand me, kid. Did no one else hear him? I don't need a Pokemon. Period. And what about a world-class detective? Because if you want to find your pops, I'm your best bet. We're gonna do this, you and me. Oh my! There's magic. That brought us together, and that magic is called hope. Listen, Listen up, kid. We, we got ways to make you talk, talk. or mine. Yeah. So tell us what we want to know. Pipe. Pipe. Yes. yes. Okay. Can. can. Shoving. Shoving. Pushing. Pushing. My, problem My problem is that, that I push people away and then hate them for leaving. He's saying you can shove it. What? what? I can shove it? Okay, that's it. No, we're switching roles. I'm bad cop. You're good cop. No, 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 we're not cop. In my head, I saw that differently. So as is. So, so is it so question. Uh huh. Is is that that's not one of the Smith kids, right? I'm looking that up right now. <laughs> it, that was the first thing. It just looked like something a Smith kid would do. Uh so but here's my question. Uh -huh. All right. Now they just had that puppet movie. Um, you know, the, yes. the uh, Happy Fun Time Murders or whatever in the heck yeah. it was. All right, that like nobody saw. Okay, right. but this is not an R-rated Pokemon movie. Okay, but it sure looks like it's going down that path from that trailer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you get what I'm saying, though. Yeah, I mean, they're uh, they're mixing they're going R -rated, puppets but definitely and not people. Going G. Yeah, I okay, mean, no, he is not related to Will Smith. Oh, thank goodness. Um, so. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this. I do too, because uh, I like Ryan Reynolds, but, but I hate no, Pokemon. It's got nothing to do with Ryan Reynolds. I, 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 I think this is going to do well. Oh, I think it'll do ridiculously well. I think it's going to be one of those sleeper hits where it doesn't do so well in the theaters, but has a huge back end with oh. DVD rentals. And toys, you're going to see a resurgence in the Pokemon. Here's the thing. I think it's actually going to do really good in the theaters. I think it's going to blow up in Japan and China. Okay. I think it's going to, I think it's overseas market um, is going to, I, I can see where you're going with that, Mama Blair. Um, you know, I can, but I, I see this as one of the, you know, one of the big hits there, you know, where it has a bigger domestic take. 
or a, a bigger foreign take than a domestic take. I think you'll still have have a, a fairly decent take there. Depends on the timing when it comes out. And then there's also Once Upon a Deadpool coming out. Yeah, that that I don't get at all. How it, <laughs> to me that doesn't make any damn sense to make a PG-13 version of Deadpool even if you are playing off of The Princess Bride with Fred Savage and no, I don't no, just don't. Don't. But they, they there has been lots of complaints from parents wanting to be able to show their kids Deadpool because it's a Marvel movie and the kids want to see it. And Deadpool is definitely Deadpool. Uh, this is Deadpool two that they're doing, and it's going to be PG thirteen. Yes. Uh, so, so have you heard anything about this, Shag? No, this is the first I'm seeing this. Oh, so, so they're Dead- going to get rid of all the cursing. They're going to get rid of all the. Yeah. The sex scenes. Deadpool has kidnapped uh, Fred Savage, put a, a Bears jersey on him, and so they're, they're, he's, he's, it's like Deadpool is telling him a story. Okay. Uh, so that all the parts of Deadpool 2 that they couldn't figure out how to... They can just flip back to scene They can just and flip back to Deadpool telling the story of what happened in that piece to Fred Savage. Okay. No, it isn't the... Fred Savage playing the kid from... Right. The, it's actual Fred Savage. Fred Savage. I don't like it. Uh, from the picture you've seen, Ugh. I've seen, they, they like they perfectly replicated uh, the room that the kid was in in Princess Bride. Next, you're going to tell me that they're going to take Harold and Kumar go to White Castle <laughs> and re-release that as, as, as a G-rated film. Now, it's only supposed to be out for a couple weeks. It's just a Christmas special for... I mean, I guess it makes sense that, you know, this is... From a marketing standpoint, it does make sense. And apparently, um, this was Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Like, did this like uh, guerrilla style? Got a couple guys in a camera. Got Fred Savage to come in. They shot this stuff in like one day, and <laughs> said, "Here you go." So, I, I'm kind of all for it. It's like Ryan Reynolds has this little bit of power right now in Hollywood, and he seems to be riding that power as far as he can. Oh yeah. He and is he is definitely playing it up and and using it for everything that he can. By the way, the the proceeds from it go to F Cancer. Yes, charity, not you know a, a, a charity. For yeah, so they're not making any money off this. Yeah, so you know, with that being said, fully endorse it. D- get as much as you can. You know, do are, are do they, what they, you can. Are they, they they didn't have to come. They had to come up with a different word for the F stands for. So it's fudge. Yes, fudge. So, Temporarily renamed. Okay, so before we get to the movie reviews, boy, yeah, it got there quick, didn't it? Um, I do. I do have one more thing I want to ask Colin about. Yep. yep. Um, is it against the law or the Disney law to display any political signage while within the park? So, uh, so here, yeah, I, I think showing political signage is it really the problem um i think the hanging banners off of stuff at disney was the start of it and then holding giant paper banners on rides uh if it was just the trump sign going down splash mountain which is what this picture is showing here that by itself probably would have been unremarked on the fact that he had already Disney does not an, unban people uh, without lots of begging. So if you did enough, okay, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. And then to immediately then get on a ride and start going down the ride with a big banner over your head, oh, I, I think that just uh, well, the first time he was. He snuck a large banner into Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom that said, Re-elect Trump, Keep America Great 2020, and it is huge. Yes, it is very large, and he hung it off of the um, where the train station is. And it looks like an endorsement from Disney. Yes. That's the problem, is misrepresenting their brand. And on that one, on that one, it's misrepresenting their brand. Because their brand is, I would assume, because here's the problem. 
with any political endorsement, you are you are isolating 50% of your customers. I don't care which side you go towards, 50% of your customers are now angry at you. Okay? 50% are gray, they, they, they love you, 50% hate you. So it's better, don't declare which side you are. Okay? Because then they can't be upset one way or the other because you didn't say anything. All right? Uh, no, I, I think he was barely unbanned. And that's why this happened. I think, like I said, lots of people do lots of weird things on Splash Mountain, and uh, that does mean that Dizzy does pay attention to Splash Mountain because uh, some people try to flash the cameras and stuff too. Yes, so uh, that is something they pay attention to. They yeah. do the same thing at uh, Space Mountain. Or uh, the the the, the, the oh, no, never mind. Anyway, yes, they do another one at another one where you get a picture taken. So, uh, so yeah. Now, uh, before we do get to movie reviews, I have a quick question for you. Is there some reason why football players are pansies? Well, because I read an article today. Uh-huh. All right. I, well, I read part of an article. I read a headline mostly. <laughs> um, but uh, it, evidently, the NFL is trying to appeal more to a broader audience. Because somebody told them, hey, if you make football global, you could make $10 billion in 10 years. Uh huh. And the owner said, we like money. We want more. Uh huh. I do think that they tried that at one point. All right. So, so now they have agreements with all the teams where they have to play an international, what's considered an international game yeah, once they, a year. They play once in, once, one game in London every year. Okay. But um, evidently, they're also playing in Mexico now. And they're not. Okay. And uh, so <clears throat> there continues to be concern from the Los Angeles Rams and the Kansas City Chiefs over the state of the playing surface at Estado uh, Azteca, which will host the league's Mexico City game on November 19th. Now, this, uh-huh. was, this was... Now, the reason why this all surfaced is because there was a Shakira concert there uh, back in October, early October... And they're saying that the fans that were there for Shakira, um, who has changed her look a little bit, uh, not quite as what she was, um, you know, damaged the turf. So there is some unevenness, some bald spots in the grass. You know, it looks like my front yard. And uh, that could injure the poor players that would have to play on the field. Yeah. Those poor, poor millionaires, and uh, that they don't that, that you know the owners are concerned about that. That their big, bulky, three hundred pound men couldn't play on some trampled grass. Yes. So my question is, why are they pansies? Well, if you are going to be making many millions of dollars over the next several years. And you're asked to play on a field where it's very likely that you will permanently damage your legs so that you will not make those millions of dollars that you're planning to make over the next several years. Shakira fans didn't bring bobcats and rip up the field with them. It doesn't matter. You know, one of the big reasons that a lot of stadiums have turf is because it's consistent. (coughs) But also, it's it's a flat surface. You know what you're going to be playing on. It, that's why in the NBA, if a guy falls, you have a team of uber geeks with towels that jump out there and dry the floor off. Why? Because they don't want that floor gets very, very slippery when it's wet and they don't want anyone getting hurt. At, on the same hockey, side, ice you hockey have, players. on the same them. side, you have. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Ice hockey players. If if the conditions are not right and the ice is too soft. It is very easy for you to go to stop, and it's known as catching an edge and twisting your ankle, rolling your ankle, and falling over. It's the same thing with players on turf. If there's a little bit of a rut or a little bit of an uneven spot, and they go to cut to try and get away from someone, they could very easily... Don't those naturally occur during the game when you have these no. many men trying to start and stop anyway? No, no, that's, no the that's, point. Exact, that's the that's why they have turf. It's designed to stay level while still providing 
traction, what have you. See, but they don't just, have turf. They still now, have carefully taken care here's the of. Thing. Yes. Now, the, the game has been canceled. Okay, because I hear from players, players themselves and ex-players, who say, you know what, all the padding, all the precautions and everything have actually made the game more dangerous. Okay? Well, they, it, there's it actually true. an argument that says if we were to go back to less padding, uh, you know, less stringent rules and everything, the players themselves would be more cautious about what they're doing. That's, that is true, but you also have an issue where you have players. The Look at the average size of a player back then versus now, and this is across most contact sports. The NHL, the average height of a player has gone from like 5'10 to 6'3, and the average weight has gone from like 140 to like 190. But if so, we're really concerned, why don't we just switch to flag football? They're getting closer to that every year. If it's, if it's so yeah. important, if it's so important, I mean, you know, I just, I just year, have a, an issue with, you know, because I saw pictures of the turf. It didn't look that bad. It didn't look anything worse than what we've played in the front yard or anything else. Okay, it didn't look like, you know, anything these people probably played in high school or even in college. All right. That they, the speed of the game in an NFL game versus a high school game versus a college game, it's not even close. I'm not saying let them out onto a NASCAR track with a mower engine. All right, or with parts what missing saying from the is car. This is the I'm just saying of saying, oh, we're going to have a NASCAR race with the actual NASCAR cars, but we're going to do it in Springfield, Illinois, <laughs> at the State Fair track. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying, I think they're being a, a bit overly dramatic here. Well, we and also I, don't know how big of a... Like, look, have you ever seen pictures of the field after, like, Coachella? Like, the concert venue? The, no, I couldn't get tickets last year. There is nothing level about that. Because you get the one groups that are all dancing in the same spot. Mm -hmm. So they're basically digging a hole over the course of a day or right. hours or whatever. That's what happens. And Shakira's fans move. Well, yes. They don't just stand there and, like, And it wasn't oh! just Shakira. There was multiple events that happened at this stadium, and it was raining. And those cumulative things have yeah. caused... So it was also a problems. month ago, though. So how long does it take to repair a turf or to get it back, especially in Mexico? Well, Mexico ain't got no money to fix it. Well, but the NFL is obviously... The NFL was trying to re-turf the stadium, but they ran out of time because it's still been raining. And so with the rain, they haven't been able to uh, actually so do anything. It, it sounds more like it's a perfect storm of events that kept it from happening at yeah. this point. I mean, because we made the Olympics in Rio happen. But that was you know, a cesspool. And, 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 and that was ridiculous. And, and Brazil is still uh, having huge financial issues because of it. So, I mean, I just, I don't know. Well, and, and also, there's tons of people going, why do we need international play? Okay. Other, I mean, didn't they, didn't money, the obvious question is people getting rich. Didn't yes. they All have right. a European football league at one point? Yeah, they still do. Okay, so you still have all of that. But, I mean, NASCAR runs I, races uh, across the border. They they were well, no, not not anymore. They were running a race in Canada every year, and they were running a race in Mexico City every year. Um, they stopped doing that just because the logistics for the teams to transport the cars. You know, it's not like getting everybody on a plane and going. Right. You have it's all the equipment that goes along with it. They, I mean, NASCAR ran a race in Japan once, and so you know, I saw Cars Three. They get there. It, it's a true statement that there is a general lack of football players compared to baseball players. Well, it, there, there's a very, oh, yeah. very steep um, cliff of quality between people who are on NFL teams and it's not a see like uh, baseball teams you can spend many years 
at the, at the lower leagues and then finally get up to the to the major league. Well, yeah, I know that the I know that the age cutoff for viable NFL player is much lower. Well, it's not know. just that, but basically for for the NFL, and I could be wrong, but for the NFL, it's pretty much college and the NFL. Yes, right? but baseball, you have. You have A, you have double A, you got triple A, so you have a farm system. Mm-hmm. Um, well, until Vince McMahon comes through and builds that, you know, new XFL. The XF, the XFL That's the problem. Yeah. That this, the players aren't there. Yeah. Um, so right now it says the average age of the top competitors in the NFL is twenty five point two years old. And yeah, that's about how old they enter the NFL. So, because they have to go through college first. It's not like and nobody goes directly from high school to the NFL. Well, no, but most of them only put a couple of years in at college. I, I don't know that a lot of them put in a full four years. Uh, for NFL players, they generally at least get through their junior year. Okay. So they, they basically decide if they want to get, leave after the junior year or the senior year. Because so, they tend not to be on the teams in the first couple of years of college either. Uh, so... To, and it says the average age that you leave the NFL here is around 27.6. So you've got like a two and a half year point to make your money and yeah, hopefully not blow it. Which is why they're complaining about a, a field where they may blow it immediately. Well, you just got to be smart about your contracts. Which you need to be smart about. <laughs> so. Which you need to be smart about. And a lot of uh, ex NFL players are making this clear to younger ones. You'll be smart about is. When money you go management. to college, get a degree that means something. <laughs> no, they're all going to become players. They're going to make millions of dollars, and then they're going to become broadcasters. Yeah, that seems is, to be the most popular. Don't, don't don't be like Alvin Mack in the program, where he was going to go number one, and one hit took him out. Yeah, you're yep. done. Because if you look at it and say, "Oh yeah, I made a million dollars. Great. What can you do now? Um, I can." make burgers at a McDonald's. And so, a, a million dollars great. That's a lot of money. That's not enough to live your entire life off of. No. Especially when you spent most of it in that first year in the NFL. Oh, I mean, look, a million dollars if if at our age we got a job that paid a million dollars a year for two years. Okay, a little different. Yeah. Because we, we don't have 60 years ahead of us to worry about. Uh, anyway, yeah. All right. So from one disaster to another, uh, it's time now for the double feature movie review. Uh, this week, this episode, we are looking at the picks Ah Zombies and Rapture Palooza. Um, Ah Zombies brought to us on Amazon Prime, and Rapture Palooza brought to us on Netflix. Uh, Mike, no, which they were both? They're both Amazon. Were they both Amazon? Okay. Yeah. Uh, which one do you want to start with? Let's start with Ah Zombies. Ah Zombies. Um, I'll go first if you don't mind. Uh, you know, on this, I actually did my write ups today, so have typey type type stuff. When my wife asked me this week if any of the movies we had to watch were something we could both watch, my answer was simple: their names are Ah Zombies and Rapture Palooza. Her response was, okay, that answers that, then Magnum P.I. it is. However, I soldiered on and watched. Up first for me was Ah Zombies, mostly because my thoughts were if it was too graphic or horror-filled, then I could just punch out and feel better because at least I finished the second one. Too bad for me that Ah Zombies isn't the flesh-eating, walking dead, brain-starved horror I thought it would be. Nope, instead it was a physics experiment gone horribly awry. Somehow this movie managed to slow the passage of time to near nothingness. I feel as if I lived a thousand lifetimes within what actually only took 90 minutes. This movie is such a phenomenal time suck that should you be told that you only have 10 days to live, I would suggest watching Ah Zombies over and over and over again because soon you will find yourself welcoming death with open arms. Now to the important part of the review, the plot synopsis. The movie has no plot. Here's what you need to know. The movie is told from the zombie's point of view, but they don't realize they're zombies. This movie takes great liberty with the concept that the five-second rule is hogwash, and 
If you've ever wondered what happened to Warner Huntington III after Elwoods turned him down in Legally Blonde, you can find him uh, as a slacker who hangs out at a bowling alley making ice cream ale with his slacker friend and hoebag on and off again girlfriend who doesn't know a sleazeball when he's right in front of her, which is probably why she's with Warner in the first place. Sorry, I mean Mike. Oh, and one more thing. The special effects person who did the green screen work of Mike as only being a head, all right, needs to be fired. Needs to never say special effects is in his title ever again. Okay, with that said, I give this movie a big old puke rating. It's horrendous. It's horrible. I'm sad for watching it. I feel like it was never going to get over. Mike, uh, why don't you go next? Okay. So, every once in a while, even a good movie has one big plot hole at the very beginning that sets the tone and potentially ruins the rest of the movie. A good movie that this happened to was Rise of the Planet of the Apes, where... Blue Eyes goes crazy in the beginning and everybody thinks it's a reaction to the drug, but nobody did a pregnancy test to find out that, no, she was pregnant while they were giving her the drugs and she was just trying to protect Caesar. So, Ah Zombie suffers this same fate, and albeit a worse movie. We start with Zombie juice, which was a failed super soldier serum that leaked out of a barrel onto the ground through a cardboard box through the milk carton looking ice cream mix containers, at which point it was poured into an ice cream machine and consumed by our four main characters. At no point in time did this stuff even touch the box, let alone be able to seep in and contaminate the ice cream mix. So there is the fatal flaw in this movie from the start. Two guys driving the truck to get rid of the super serum, which they label as expired infant formula, with just giant stickers over the biohazard thing. They say they look and they say to each other, relax, no one knows. But they don't hear the dude on the motorcycle next to them. While we're at it, these idiots from the army are looking at a paper map. Unless you are in combat, no one uses paper maps anymore. It just doesn't happen. The cinematography cutting back and forth between color and black and white, depending on which point of view you're looking at this from, from the zombie point of view or the rest of the world point of view, gave this movie a very they live vibe. Um, Nothing to worry about, though, because the colonel in charge of the whole operation is a people person with people skills. (laughs) <laughs> damn it <laughs> problem will be solved wouldn't be a bad movie in this vein without some kind of sexual joke that being the zombie pecker falling off I'd like to know how Mike was able to get the pin out of the grenade in his mouth when he's got no freaking hands Spoiler alert. Who am I kidding? Nobody's going to watch this movie. Unlike Shaggy, I gave this a verb instead of a puke. I wanted to give it a puke. However, the idea of a movie telling the story from the zombie perspective was kind of cool. And I think the story 
it was better done in what the heck was the name of the movie? Uh, Cold something, I think. I'll have to look it up. There was another zombie movie with um, the dude with Nicholas Holt. Warm, warm bodies, maybe warm bodies, where it kind of told the story from the perspective of the zombies for part of it. Um, but this concept was wasted on this movie. This, there were a few moments that were kind of entertaining, but for the most part, avoid this movie, just as you would avoid beer-flavored soft ice cream. Mm-hmm. Colin, you're betting cleanup. Yeah, so <clears throat> this uh, movie originally was called Wasting Away, which I think that makes it's a better, better name for it. Uh, I agree with Mike. Uh, I, th- I like the idea of a zombie movie where you are focusing on the zombies. But, I, okay, here's the thing. If I'm going to watch a movie where you're focusing on the zombies, I want to where they think everything is still their normal, right? If you're a zombie, then you don't look at everything and say, oh, I'm falling apart. It should be like they still look human. And then the rest of the world changes. So that like there's a whole bunch of hamburgers running around, and they're trying to catch it. something like that. That would be fun. Um, yeah, beyond that, that's, this, this movie, a uh, million dollars on this movie. <laughs> Big budget. Big budget there, yeah. Uh, I, I uh, went with a uh, random emotion generator for my score on this, and I came up with annoyed. Annoyed. I I actually think we've had that one before. I'll have to find out. I'll have to look in my thing of where it lies. All right, next up is Rapture Palooza. We'll just keep this order going. Um, the end of the world comes, and you're not chosen to ascend to heaven. What lies in wait for you? Well, if you're anything like us, it's the movie Rapture Palooza, a movie that is supposed to be about two teens battling their way through the religious apocalypse. Now, 2013 is no stranger to the end of the world movies. We had Pacific Rim, World War Z, Evil Dead, Hunger Games Catching Fire, Thor Dark World, The World's End, The Purge, and what appears to be a direct competitor to this film, This is the End. What Rapture Palooza doesn't have that all those other movies had is massive starfire killer filming locations and mass market distribution. To give you an idea, all the Rapture Palooza stars uh, were big either way before or way after or never. For example, here's the cast that you might know. Anna Kendrick, John Francis Daly, Rob Corddry, John Michael Higgins, Thomas Lennon, and in a really bizarre twist, one of the bigger names, Craig Robinson, also starred in This Is The End, which was much more well-received, had a bigger budget, and starred Seth Rogen. Guess which one he's mentioned as being known for in his IMDb? You betcha, it's not a Palooza film. (laughs) So, in this crowded space, how did the Palooza film fare? Well, honestly, I have to say this movie isn't too bad. And had the space not already been filled to the brim, I would guess it probably would have done much better domestically. I mean, it made more in Cambodia and Australia than it did in the U.S. to give you an idea of its (laughs) money, money situation. That being said, I think the concept of a post-rapture world and adjusting to life in it is a fairly fresh concept for the time. I mean, until these movies had dealt with it, we all just assumed the planet blew up. This is the end took a much more Mad Max feel to it, and I'm much happier with the adjusted new normal aspect that Rapture Palooza came with. We know we're all creatures of habit, and should something happen, we'll just adjust and keep moving forward. I also have to say that the addition of Dr. Ken as the big G.O.D. was a huge surprise at the end. And I very much appreciated that they didn't really crawl to a finish, but instead reacted much like I would like to think I would. Yes, I would like to say I would run away from the two most powerful beings who both want to kill me. But to just see the beat down of the millennia going on before me, I think I'd also be stuck just seeing the two beat the living snot out of each other. In all, it's a very well-done movie with plenty of laughs and some great cameos from familiars, not only from film, but also from TV. 
So if you enter what I would refer to as a cult comedy, then I think this would be a film for you. Will I watch it again? Probably not. But I didn't hate myself for watching it the first time. So this earns a solid meh from me. The, the more and more reviews we do, I'm getting harder and harder to please. Yeah, I'm finding that too. Um, so this movie starts out with the rapture and half the world is gone all of a sudden, which immediately makes me wonder, does this take place in the Marvel Universe at the time of the snap? I'm not mad if it does. It just seems to be an interesting coincidence. And fun fact, none of these characters, none of these actors in this movie have ever been in a Marvel MCU film. Greg Robinson playing the Antichrist is quite possibly one of the best things I have ever seen in the film, in, in any movie. And he plays this part fantastically. Anna Kendrick playing a virgin, however, <laughs> just kills the vibe that Craig is giving off. But now, at least, the believability of the film is balanced. Rob Caudry's mustache is quite possibly the most disturbing thing about this movie. And I'm not even talking about the... It's not the talking locust thingies. It's not the crows that curse everybody out. Not the pothead demons. No, it's the mustache. I kick so much ass, my feet need condoms. <laughs> this is a line said by Craig Robinson. I'm going to use this line someday. Probably in the same night that I used the next one that he dropped. If I was a dinosaur, I'd be a lickalotopus. All right. This movie has got more one-liners so far than Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. But then we get to the end. Believability was up at about here. And it's, I, this, this is an interesting point of reference that you refer to him as Dr. Ken. I refer to him as Mr. Chow. And when Mr. Chow starts acting as, a, as God, not a God, as God... Uh, the movie went off the deep end. So believability went from here to here. And then it dropped off the chart when the dude pulls out a Blackberry to film the fight between <laughs> God and Satan. And the ending kind of made me mad because it seems like the entire movie was nothing more than a giant PSA for why you have to have GFCI outlets within six feet of water anywhere in your home or outside your home. However, I'm going to give this a solid smile. Rewatchability, not really there unless you are a huge fan of one of the stars, but... If you like movies like Hot Tub Time Machine, it's kind of in that vein of comedy. So if you like that, you'll probably like this movie a lot. Yep. All right, Colin, wrap it up for us. So it's interesting you say that because uh, some consider this the third in the Hot Tub trilogy because um, it's the third movie in a row with uh, Rob Cordy and Craig Robinson. So you had... Hot Tub Time Machine, Hot Tub Time Machine 2, and this movie. Um, now, this, okay, Jaggy re referred to uh, This is the End. Uh, this movie actually came out only uh, five days before This is the End. This movie cost $2 million. This is the End cost $32 million. I think it could be debated. Was the extra thirty million dollars really necessary? That was over Seth Rogen's paycheck. Yeah, <laughs> and Hermione and uh, mm -hmm. everybody else in and, that movie, and the other stoner dude, James Franco. Well, all of them were in there, so mm -hmm. uh, I think it's debatable. Um, I, I think also um, 
I do have to point out, anytime there's one of these rapture movies, it really bugs me when they start referring to the Book of Revelations, which doesn't exist. Um, technically, I this is my own personal um, religion thing here, but uh, I uh, I reject the entire Book of Revelation as a bolt-on that should not be in there. But uh, that's just me. Um, so yeah, I, I think you know, compared to this is the end, which totally overshadowed this uh, this movie. I, I, it's definitely much, much more worth uh, its cost. Um, I, I lost my random emotion generator, so I'm just going to give this a um, whimper. Okay, I will have to look that one up as well. Yep. I can't remember where that one falls. All right, so um, so with that said, uh, you know, those were both pretty solid reviews, um, I think, for, for these movies. You know, uh, Mike, uh, on point as always. I mean, you know, I, I write my stuff down. Um, you know, Colin, you, you know, I, I think uh, those were as well thought out and as organized as all your reviews are. By the way, um, Hot Tub Time Machine, this couldn't be the third in the Hot Tub Time Machine series because um, this came out between Hot Tub Time Machine and well, Hot Tub Time Machine 2. Go complain to IMDb because okay. uh, it's wrong. But, uh, so, but there was a hot tub. Yeah, there was a hot tub involved. Uh, Mike is correct. So, um, yeah, really, Colin, tell us, what was your favorite scene in Ah Zombies? Oh, uh, well, my favorite scene. <laughs> I mean, because I know what mine is, and Mike, you know what yours is. <laughs> so we're gonna. So after after Colin goes, we can give ours, because we don't normally do this. This is always extra. We do this after we close the show. So which one, oh. what one did you like the best? When the zombies oh. thought that they were eating the brains, but it was actually a bottle of Coke. I don't remember that one, Mike. I mean, I remember them asking if the Mexican chef's brains would be spicy or not. I I kind I kind of thought that was that was funny. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to I'm going to put that one as as my funniest because they asked the question and it's just so racially insensitive. But the <laughs> fact that they actually went through with it, yeah, and showed him eating a taco, no less. <laughs> yes, and he went, "Ooh, picante." Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it was good. All right, so Rapture Palooza then. Uh, the scene where Craig Robinson as the Beast was coming up out of the uh, out of the ocean. Oh, that one was yours. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. I I would have gone with the uh, with the pot smoking um, security guard wraiths. You know, not knowing the difference between a rap song and bullets, but you know, to each their own. Um, how about for me, you it, for me, it was when Anna Kendrick showed up as for dinner with the beast. Up, oh. <laughs> and there it goes again. That's uh, so. <laughs> That's funny that Mike just went off like that. I don't know what it is about Skype. It doesn't like him. I, I, we should time it. Yeah. We should figure out if it's like a certain amount of time goes by and then he drops. I don't think so, because, like. I don't think it is. Because then he goes. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Welcome back. Once again. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. He went down. At seven oh one. Uh huh. It is eight oh one. Oh, so you think that it's a sixty minute timer? Okay, so it could be a sixty minute timer. That's weird. Really? Because I'm getting a thing popping up that's saying reconnecting. Uh, hmm. Quality ish, whatever. Weird. But yeah, I don't know. Um. So, all right, great. Now, Mike, I think you and I both can agree that when Anna Kendrick came out in the black teddy. That was something that we neither one of us were expecting, right? Did you watch the director's cut? Because I don't remember that scene. <laughs> okay. 
And I think I would have remembered that scene. Basically, folks, Colin didn't watch the movies. No, I was too busy going on vacation. and uh, so, so, But it shows you how easy sometimes these are to write because he just took what Mike and I said and, and a little IMDb. bit of IMDb and came up with his... But you need to watch both of these just to show, just to see at least the Rapture Palooza because you will like that one. Uh, but do not watch it with your parents. Yeah, that that was part of the. <laughs> that is, I, I know sometimes you guys watch these as a family yeah. movie. Uh, don't do that. No, no. I actually sent him a note going not child appropriate, probably not parent appropriate. <laughs> Well, if it's anything like this is the end, which is not appropriate at all in the end. All right. So we do need to pick uh, movies for the next time that we're on. Uh, so, and then we'll have plenty of time to watch it. We'll figure yeah, out when that's going to be. Yes. Uh, so one to 41. One to 41. 34. So 34. It is Someone Marry Barry. Someone Marry Barry. Friends try to find a wife for their obnoxious buddy. Oh, Someone Marry Barry. Okay. Yeah, but their Sorry. plan backfires when his new girlfriend turns out to be just as socially inappropriate. All right. Could be funny. And the next one is nine. I was thinking somehow that because Mary Barry is a famous British baker. I thought maybe we somehow got a Mary Berry TV show in the list. Nope. And it looks like uh, Damon Wayans Jr. is the only one that we will know from there, from that cast, by the way. Okay. I have a feeling I'm going to take some heat for this one, but it's called Joysticks on Amazon. And yes, it's still available. And yes, I added this one. Joysticks movie. Uh, ooh. This is this looks like an, a classic eighties film. A successful businessman attempts to shut down a video arcade he believes is harmful to the mental health of children. I I can tell you right now, I'm digging it already, man. It's it's in my genre. You know, it is uh it looks like it's a classic eighties comedy, right? It's looking like something that'll go on Shaggy's Why Have I Ever Seen This List. Yeah. I mean, this is right up there with why don't I have this already on Plex? 1983. Oh, yeah. Graydon uh, Clark. No. Joysticks was 1970, my friend. Well, it said 1983. 1970, really? We have a different joysticks? More fun than games? Am I? Do I have the right description? I'm pasting you the actual link. Okay. Okay, um, that is more fun than games. Uh, when concerned parents try to shut down a local video emporium, a group of hardcore gamers battled to save the arcade. Gary Clark, Groyd, Graydon Clark. Yes, that's it's yeah. the same one. Yeah, it's. I think they've got the date wrong on this. Yeah, it was definitely 1983. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the, the review says fun arcade-themed fluff from the 80s. Okay, that's a review. Yeah, but I'm I'm pretty sure looking at the clothing and everything else, I'm pretty sure it's the eighties. It maybe. was released fourth of March, nineteen eighty three. Okay. Then IMDB has it wrong. No, that's what I'm seeing IMDB. I think Amazon's copy of IMDB is wrong. Well okay. Amazon owns IMDB, so now um we may want to I'm seeing something that this uh, the streaming version may have a video quality issue. Okay, well, let's let's check it real quick here. Yeah, oh, looks like geez. a typical '80s movie to me. Looks all right. Okay. Your own words, would you? I mean, that's probably somebody that's used to Blu-ray quality, and well, does no. What they're what they're saying is that you. Um, that some of the stuff is cut off. Cut off. Like some of the titles and what have you. Oh. I don't know. From a... from a Version cuts off some of the opening titles on the sides. Now, this was from a review from last year. 
so maybe they fixed they it. They may have fixed it. <coughs> I don't know. It's it looks plenty fine to me. So yeah, no, it looks good to me. So yeah, a 1973 game about uh, uh, an arcade. It basically just have pong. <laughs> True. True. Okay. All right, folks. Thanks for listening, tuning in, and uh, watching. Potentially watching this show. Uh, we always enjoy everybody chiming in, letting us know what you're thinking about the show. So don't forget, even after if you're listening to this on delay, you can always send us a Facebook message, Twitter, Instagram post, whatever it is. Email us show at ptrradio.com. Send us a text message. We're good for that. Um, you know, all that stuff's available after the show, whether you're listening to this on podcast or whatever. Don't forget, sign up for the podcast so that you never miss a show. Um, just go to ptrradio.com. Got all the subscription links there. Makes it really easy to subscribe using iTunes, Stitcher, Android, um, Podcast Player, whatever you want. I use Podcast Addict, but you don't have to. There are over 690 people that do, though, so why don't you? Um, with that said, though, um, we're not sure when our next show will be back. Three to four weeks, maybe. I don't know. Mike and I are, might pop on sometime, so make sure that you pay attention to our Facebook feed. And uh, if you see us on, make sure that you say hi. So we're probably looking at maybe like the third or so possibly or the week after so the third or the tenth is probably when we're looking at being back on the air so um you know one of those two and then don't forget i'm going to try to do some on the road agains i don't know how well that's going to go over with the wife in the car but uh you never know so keep an eye out for those on the podcast feed those will only be on the podcast feed so thank you to everybody who sent in suggestions always looking for more of those so with that said, folks, again, ptrradio.com is your source for everything about the show. My name's Shaggy. I'm Colin. I'm Mike the Ape Man. Stick a fork in us, folks. We are done. Later. <laughs>